I'm always surprised when I talk to people and find out that they don't know about woolly nylon because it's such a cool um, thread for very specific uses, but when I use it, I love it. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christine, founder of Sewing and the City, and today I am so excited because we're gonna be talking all about woolly nylon thread. So before we dive in, I just wanted to share the top I'm wearing. Um, this is my Rivington t-shirt, but I did a quilted sleeve hack. So I did these quilted panels and then made my little puff sleeve and I just love this top. So I had originally made this top for holiday back in December, but I feel like the white makes it, um, I don't know, I've been wearing it and I really like it and hey, maybe it's Christmas in July, right? So in this video, we're gonna be talking all about what is woolly nylon thread, um, when to use it and how to use it. The woolly nylon thread is this thread made of nylon, obviously, and it's quite stretchy. Um, I would say this is almost stretchy to like uh, double its original width and you can see, I hope it'll like zoom in, it's really, really soft. You see that? Oh, I just love it. It's um, it's like, it's fluffy kind of. So um, that is woolly nylon. So it does come in obviously 100% nylon, which is what I have here. Um, this is made in Japan. So it comes in nylon. You can also find some polyester versions out there. The only difference I would say that I could think of is the nylon might be slightly a bit heat sensitive, whereas the polyester would probably not be heat sensitive. Um, but from what I found really out there, it's really mostly nylon. You might also find brands that are called textured nylon as opposed to the woolly nylon. So this one is um, woolly nylon, but you may find ones that are textured nylon. Very, very similar um, and has the same properties as the woolly nylon, perhaps not quite as stretchy um, as the woolly nylon, but still as strong. So that's a good option if that's what you find um, in your local fabric shop or wherever you shop. Um, I will mention that I've looked online for Woolly Nylon just to price it out. It is available on Amazon as well as many small retailers. So if I, when I get to the, the, the point where I need to buy more, I will probably find a small online retailer that sells it and buy it from them. Now let's talk about when to use Woolly Nylon because I, this is seriously like the most magical part. So um, obviously Woolly Nylon, you can use with all your knits, your swimwear, um, even woven. Because it's a bit more expensive, I don't use it all the time. Just use it when I have a need for it. So when I need woolly nylon is usually lately when I'm working with uh, fabrics that lint, so like a terry cloth. So I recently made these little, um, this is my Lennox short pattern out of this towel. Um, and if you have ever worked with terry cloth before, you know it's an absolute let's just say, let's just be honest, like it's a nightmare. Like you get all of the little, this is my robe. So you get all of these little, the little um, like fibers, they, they like get everywhere. And so when you're sewing with terry cloth, you will literally have the fibers everywhere. And the problem is, is that let's say, so this is my robe. And so let's say that I didn't use, I just used a regular serger or nothing at all my inside seams would just be shedding all over the house. And so you would have all these little loops all over your house and you would just be constantly annoyed. And so what I found out like through experimenting is that you can actually use woolly nylon in your upper and lower loopers when you're working with this type of fabric that frays and or that sheds and then what it does, you shorten your stitch, stitch length. So you use it in your upper lower loopers, you shorten your stitch length. I'm gonna get into that, all of how to do that next. But what happens is your woolly nylon thread, it, because it, um, it stretches, it like fills in your serger stitch. And so none of the loops can like escape through your overlock. It's so genius. And so that's one I really love to use. So here, 
you can see um, this, uh, you can see the woolly nylon has kind of filled in the stitch. I probably could have even shortened my stitch length even a little bit more in this case, um, but this one didn't fray as badly because the loops, um, it's, I think it's a little bit of a lower quality fabric than my, um, my terry cloth robe. Um, but you can see that woolly nylon thread just fills in that stitch. And so none of those loops are gonna escape. Like it's all filled in. If I were to use my regular thread, um, sure, I could, I could shorten the stitch length to create like a more filled in stitch, but there, there's really nothing that can compare to the fill of the woolly nylon because of its stretch. So you can definitely use it for your knits and your swimwear and really kind of maximize like the stretchability of it. But where I really think that woolly nylon shines is with terry cloth and some of these fabrics that shed. I've also seen it being used on napkin edges. So where you want to use a rolled hem with your serger. And again, it's like the same um, thinking is like anytime you want a stitch that's really filled in so that it's like you know smooth and like constant and not like no gaps in between your serger stitches the woolly nylon is such a dream the other surprising thing that I learned just from using woolly nylon is that if you have sensitive skin the and like if inside seams kind of bother you bother your skin or you're just sensitive to um you can use woolly nylon to finish off your your fabric edges and the because it's so soft it like it just literally creates these seams that are you can't even really feel them they're just really really soft so this would work really well um we talk about using this in my course Lux loungewear um, where we talk all about sewing um, like lounger and lingerie um, styles. And so this could be really, really good for your sleepwear. Um, you know, things like when you're using fabric that's gonna be really close to your body, um, if you have sensitive skin, definitely consider getting some woolly nylon. Now let's talk about how to use woolly nylon. So the first thing I wanna say about woolly nylon thread, whether you use it in your overlock like I do or your sewing machine, you never ever ever wanna use it in your needle. So um, that would be like the upper, um, upper thread of your sewing machine or any, your left or your right needles of your serger. It doesn't work in the needles. So with an overlocker, you wanna use your woolly nylon thread in your upper and your lower loopers. So obviously the loopers are the part that create that, um, you know, like the loop part of our stitch. So the loopers are what you actually see here. The needle obviously is just running right along there. So um, upper and lower loopers, I think I can flip this. So that's where we're gonna use the woolly nylon in your overlocker. So when I am threading my overlocker, um, which by the way, if you are intimidated about threading your overlocker, I have a free three-day thread your serger challenge that's on demand. Um, I will drop the link below and I walk through exactly like threading your serger and I promise you're gonna be way more confident after you take that challenge. Um, so definitely take a look at that. But when I'm threading my serger, I'm threading it just like normal with any other normal thread, even though it's really stretchy. So I generally am like tying off my threads, pulling them through, and then sewing a test strip um, just to make sure my stitch is how I want it. So as you're sewing with your actual, um, with your actual fabric, be it your terry cloth or your knits, um, you want to sew a sample because you can play with your stitch length. So the length is what I'm generally playing with. In this case, I have my machine set up for, I have my right needle. So um, this is a three thread overlock narrow that I'm using. Um, and I generally have my stitch length on about a three. So in this case with my woolly nylon, I think with my shorts, I think I set this to about a two because that's what it was set on here when I came to it. Um, so I like, I, I'm pretty happy with the coverage that I get with that set on a two. I think right there, you can kind of see, I wish, 
I wish you could see it really clearly like um, in person, but you can see I'm getting like pretty good coverage with that woolly nylon. Um, but I think if I were to maybe do this again, maybe I would take it down to like a 1.5 and just see if I could really cover all the, the spaces between my looper threads. Um, but you just want to grab a sample and definitely play, um, you know, don't be afraid to play with your stitch length in this case with the woolly nylon. One thing I want to mention about the tension is in general, my tensions just stay the same no matter if I'm using my regular thread or my woolly nylon. Little pro tip here that I always remember in my mind when I'm working with my serger tension is lower, looser, higher, tighter. So it's a little bit of a mind rhyme, okay? So lower in number on your dials means it's a looser tension. The higher the number in your um, on your dials, the tighter the tension. So that's always how I remember. I just repeat that rhyme to myself and it really helps me to remember which way to turn my serger dials um, in order to get the effect that I want, whether I wanna loosen my stitch or tighten it. I found with my woolly nylon, I rarely ever need to go tighter. In general, you know, I might always stay the same, but when in doubt, maybe you just wanna drop um, the tension looser, maybe one number or so, um, just so that it's not too tight. Because I feel like if the tension in your lower or upper loopers is too tight, the woolly nylon thread is gonna pull and then you won't get that beautiful fill that we're really using the woolly nylon for. If you're interested in learning more about the fabric that I found to make these shorts, I also made a matching top. Be sure to check out the fabric haul video that I did last week in case you missed it. I'll drop the link here and I hope that you love woolly nylon as much as I do and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.